The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam one day says to his companions, Halummu, come over. The companions came to the Prophet Sallallahu they came close and sat around him. And he says, Hada Rasulu Rabbil Alameen. This is the Messenger of Allah. And he's referring to Jibreel Alayhi Salam. So he said, Jibreel, the Holy Spirit came to me. Or oh, the Holy Spirit inspired in me these words that a soul or a person will not die until they have consumed all of the time that is allotted to them in this life. And no person will die, no soul will die until it has received all of its written provision. It will receive it before it dies in full. Be mindful of Allah, be fearful of Allah, be dutiful to Allah. And seek your provision with moderation and balance. And don't let your impatience with regards to your provision come into you by committing acts of disobedience or by resorting to unlawful means. What is from Allah can only be attained by obeying Him. That means your time is set. Your provision is fixed. It's been decided. And the Prophet ﷺ said in the hadith that Allah wrote all the details of this life and everything that is going to happen in it 50,000 years before the creation of the heavens and the earth. Everything was known to Allah from eternity. It's a decided matter. What does this tell us? This is a big part of the puzzle of life. It tells us that things are in the hands of Allah. That you are taken care of. So don't fear anything. Don't think you will miss out on anything that is meant to come to you. What is meant to come to you will land on your lap. What is not meant to come to you, you will never get it no matter how hard you try. That's what you're going to get. That tells us things are in the hands of Allah. They decided by Allah, the Almighty. He has the power. He has the might. He decides. He has the final say. Nothing happens in His kingdom but what He allows. That's the world that we live in. And we need to be mindful of this all the time. So that leads us to Rest assured that Allah will take care of us. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has already figured out our life and He has put everything in place. So rest assured, don't lose heart seeking your provision or facing the calamities and hardships and trials of life. Don't lose heart. Allah has taken care of everything. So you're not alone in this life. You're not reinventing your life Allah has figured everything out Allah has said everything in your life so you are taken care of you don't have to worry you don't have to burn yourself out being concerned about what happened what is happening what is going to happen it is all taken care of that's what it means so you will not lose a second of your life you're going to get it in full no one can take milliseconds even from your life. So if you are meant to die, you will die at that point. No accident, no calamity, no surprise is going to cut your life short. You're going to die when your time comes. And the Prophet ﷺ said in the authentic hadith, and know that all of humanity, all of the creation, if they gather together to bring you any harm they will not be able to harm you with anything that is not written for you all what people do all what people strive for ends up meeting the writing the divine writing of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that's the maximum we can do meet the words of allah fulfill 
the written qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is a source of tranquility and peace. In an authentic hadith, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, because everyone is going probably through hard times now, and sometimes we are tempted to fall into haram. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tells us how rizq works, a big piece of the puzzle. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, if a human being, were to run away from their provision, avoiding the provision, the risk, desperately, as humans often run away or try to run away from their fate, from their death, the risk will follow them and catch them, just as their death follows them and catches them. Things are in the hands of Allah. Another piece of the puzzle, because many people will think, okay, everything is set, let me just sit back, relax, whatever was written, to come to me will come to me. Well, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reprimanded Bani Israel and everyone else among humans. He said to them, do you believe in part of the book and you leave off another part? Indeed, the punishment of such people is going to be disgrace and humiliation in this life. And in the next life, there will be a humiliating punishment. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Walk through the earth and seek the provision of Allah. The fact that the provision of Allah was written for you is part of the puzzle. The other part of the puzzle is that you go out and seek it. Both are from Allah. You can't choose one and leave the other. Both go together. Because you don't know what your provision is. You don't know what your fate is. You're supposed to be proactive in this life. Seek your provision. And that's what the Prophet ﷺ says in this hadith. Sometimes your impatience, you want some wealth or some money or some gain to come to you at your own estimation, at your own level of expectation. But it's not written to come to you at that time. Why? Because in our small limited minds, we are impatient. We're not coming from a good place. This should have come to me. No, that's your expectation. It doesn't have to be right. Allah is wiser. Allah knows best. So don't let your impatience lead you to seek your provision through unlawful acts. Your seeking unlawful means is not going to increase your provision. If you are not meant to get it, you will not get it no matter what. Why? So that you know your true place. Who are you? Who am I? We're slaves. We are the slaves of Allah. You don't set the terms. You don't get to decide. Allah runs the show. You don't have a say here. And although we live in that delusion, and we think we get to decide, we make things happen. We actually don't. It's far bigger than that. Why is there provision in this life? Why there is rizq? Why? It's not about you filling up your stomach or wearing clothes or living in a house or enjoying that, although this comes with the package. But the main reason there is provision is to serve one purpose. And that's the purpose for which you are placed on this planet Earth. It's the purpose for which Allah, Allah created us. And it's a noble purpose. It's a lofty end. It is to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To be mindful of Allah. To praise Allah. To celebrate His glory. To serve Him on this earth. That's why we are created. That's why there is provision to help us fulfill this. So when we try to get our provision away from the main purpose behind it, it's meaningless. It's out of context. It is stripped out of its meaning. It doesn't mean anything. And that's what takes away the blessings of our provisions. Even what is very little from Allah is abundant. But the spirit with which we received, we receive it, the greed, the expectations reduces the blessings, the barakah of all of this. Be mindful of Allah. Be dutiful to Allah. Don't forget your purpose. Don't lose your focus and your path moderately.
with balance, with common sense. Seek your provision. Don't go aggressively about it. Don't be obsessed with, where am I going to get my money from? Where am I going to get my provision from? How am I going to get food on the table? How am I going to buy this car? Oh, get that house. How am I, how am I going to afford this and that? Every day comes with its own provision. That doesn't mean don't plan. But don't be obsessed with it. Don't be consumed with it. Because you were created for a greater purpose. The moment you're concerned for provision encroaches and creeps onto your focus on, of worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that's the moment you are thrown out of balance. Don't do that. Your focus should be to serve your purpose. And then whatever attention you left on the periphery is enough to get you your provision. It's the means through which Allah's provision comes to you. That's how you strike the balance. So rest assured, Allah, when He put you on this earth, He created rizq for you. And the day you don't have risk for you, the day there is no risk written for you, the time there is no provision that's going to come to you, is the time you are meant to leave this earth. As long as you are here, Allah will provide. You'll say there are people who starve in the world. There are people who die of starvation. They didn't die because of starvation. Their provision was over because their time was up. But we are so grounded in materialism, in capitalism, that we have lost track of the bigger picture. People, do, people don't die because of famine, but famine comes to them when their time is over in order to be a bridge for them into the next world. So a believer lives between two visions, a grand vision, and that is everything is run by Allah, as decided by Allah. And the other vision is living with your feet grounded in this physical reality. The provision of Allah is decided, but you can't sit and wait. You have to go and get it. Because that's an act of worship. Because that's how Allah told us to live in this life. Go get it. There is cause and effect. But if you embrace the cause and effect to the point that you remove Allah out of your consciousness and your awareness, you can't claim to be real. People say, hey, get real. Focus on cause and effect. You can't get real if Allah is not on your mind. If the bigger picture is overshadowed, you're not real. You are just stuck in a small corner of reality. The moment you get real is when you are aware of the full spectrum of reality, the unseen, that is the bigger picture, and then your immediate reality. They both work together. And if you stick to only one of them, you are creating a violation of how you are supposed to live in this life. And one thing I want to close with is sometimes today we Muslims, we get desperate. And we start to employ things, uh, tactics that are found in the market. And you'll find this sometimes with some Muslim merchants, some Muslim business people. They try, and I've seen this as a growing phenomenon among, uh, phenomenon among Muslims, especially Muslim organizations using online marketing. They're doing extremely aggressive, sensational marketing. We have a code of ethics in Islam. You can't play on people's emotions. You can't manipulate people and be sensational just to get money from people or get funds from people or just get a buy-in from people. You can't do that. You can't do that. You can't, you can't use unethical marketing. That is dominant everywhere. Because our code of ethics doesn't come from capitalism. So be dutiful to Allah. Be mindful. Be fearful of Allah. Give Allah His duty, His, His rights. And seek your provision moderately with balance with balance. Don't be aggressive. Don't go aggressively about it. Running over everyone who stands in your way. Trying to get what you want by any means possible. That's not how it works. We have a code of ethics. Because I've seen a lot recently online, you have Muslim businesses, Muslim organizations. They don't look anything different than non-Muslim businesses. And the overpromise. 
and they play on people's emotions. They manipulate them in ways that are completely and obviously unethical. Even if your cause is good and great, you still have to, to, to use ethical means. You can't just choose part of the revelation and neglect part. You have to take all, all together. That's how it works. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us to the right course of action and accept our deeds. Allahumma aghfir al-mu'minina wal-mu'minat wal-muslimina wal-muslimat. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifuna wa salamun ala al-mursaleen. Walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.